Yes, Mr. Hodge. Commissioner, the next witness is Ms. Weeks from ANZ. Ms. Weeks in the hearing room. Ms. Weeks, would you be good enough to come into the witness box? And before you sit down, I just ask whether you would prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? An affirmation. Can we affirm the witness, please? I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm. I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Do sit down. Yes. My please, Commissioner. Uh, Ma'am, is your full name Victoria Sophia Mary Weeks? Yes, it is. And are you a non-executive director and the chair of One Path Custodians PTY Limited and One Sorry and Oasis Fund Management Limited? Yes, I am. And is your business address Level 23, 242 Pitt Street, Sydney? Yes, it is. And have you received a summons to attend to give evidence today? Yes, I have. Do you have the original of that summons in front of you? Yes, I have. I tender the submission. Sorry, tender the summons, Commissioner. Exhibit 5.250, the summons to Ms. Weeks. And Ms. Weeks, have you made a statement dated the 14th of August 2018? Yes, I have. Do you have the original of that um, statement in front of you? Yes, I do. And is, is the contents of that statement true and correct? Yes, it is. I tender the statement, Commissioner, together Exhibit with its 5. exhibits. 251, the statement of Ms. Weeks and its exhibits, the statement being dated 14 August 18. May I please, Commissioner? Yes, yes, Mr. Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Ms. Weeks, we'd just like to explore some aspects of the decision that the trustee will need to make in relation to the recent or recent-ish decision by ANZ to sell its wealth business to IOOF. Yes. So just so we can help the Commissioner to put this in context, can we bring up what is exhibit number VW15 to your statement, and that is ANZ.801.098.2273. So this is a briefing paper. that's been pre prepared that explains the successor fund transfer that's proposed. Uh, go over the, or the, I'm sorry, I should say, it at least contains a diagram that explains some aspects of the successor fund transfer. We go over to page dot two two seven four. Yeah, it's just so I can confirm, I'm looking at the right document, it's the front says Rice Warner briefing paper, is that that's correct? That's correct, yes. Yes. <coughs> Now, the present situation, is that accurately described in the first column there, which is there is presently a trustee, which is one path custodians, and it is the trustee of two super funds? Yes, that's correct. And one of those funds is one path master fund? Yes, that's correct. And we'll come back to that in a moment. And the other is the re retirement portfolio service? That's correct. And is the retirement portfolio service effectively like a superannuation wrap platform? Yes, similar to that. That is the products that a member would be invested in if they are invested through the retirement portfolio services, effectively through a platform and then into investments of their choice. Yes, a, s a smaller number than the typical wrap, but yes, that's correct. And One Path Master Fund contains a variety of different products? Yes, that's correct. And it would contain an, an employer product, the MySuper product? Yes. And it also contains, I think, is it Smart Saver or Smart Super? Smart Choice Smart Super, Choice. which is both, there's a Smart Choice employer MySuper version, or in fact two, and there's uh, Smart Choice Retail, but that's one of the, that is the core my super product is a smart choice employer. 
Smart Choice Retail is not a my super product. It's not a my super product, but it's the same underlying product. It's a life stage fund. And the investments of the One Path Master Fund are presently made into insurance policies issued by a related party life insurer? Yes, all of the uh, call them superannuation products, smart choice, and there are other superannuation products in the master fund, are currently achieved through the trustee acquiring what we call an investment leak linked insurance policy, which is issued by One Path Life, and in turn, One Path Life invests in the underlying investments, which reflect the product design of the particular product, be it Smart Choice or one of the other products. And ANZ is also selling the insurance business, which is run by One Path Life? That's correct. But not selling it to IOOF? That's correct. It's being sold to Zurich? That's correct. And the consequence of the sale to Zurich is that the One Path Master Fund will need to unwind its investments through the life insurance policies? That's correct. Uh, both the consequence of the sale to IOOF of the superannuation business would also require um, the... Um, I variously refer to it, the extraction of the investment component parts and superannuation parts from the life insurance or separation from the life insurance company. And similarly, the sale of the life insurance company to Zurich require that separation if the businesses are to be separated. And insofar as the separation of the super fund from the life insurance business goes, there might be some element of choice on the part of One Path Custodians as to exactly what action it takes, but is it the situation that inevitably either it will choose to redeem its investment in the life insurance or in the investment linked insurance policies, or it will be compelled to do so, or it will simply occur in some way at the hands of One Path Life? The current proposal, based on the, um, as, as selected by the trustee, is the preferred proposal that the redemption of those investment-linked life policies occur by way of successor fund transfer. Um, one of the significant benefits of that is that uh, it has the benefit of um, uh, legislation which provides relief from treating that separation as a capital gains or tax event and if you combine the redemption of those investment linked life policies with a successor fund transfer uh, then there's no impact on members of the fund. In fact, they're, they're kept whole or kept the same. There's no event which causes a change in their interest, albeit that the nature of the investment will no longer be through an uh, investment-linked life policy. I understand. Let me attempt to say it back to you to make sure we're agreeing with each other. The preferred option for the trustee for capital gains tax reasons is that the delinking from the insurance policy investments occur by the means of the successor fund transfer from the one path master fund into the retirement portfolio service. Sorry, could you repeat that? Apologies. The preferred method for the trustee of delinking the one path master fund from the insurance policy investments is by successor fund transfer of the one path master fund into the retirement portfolio service. Yes, that's correct. At this stage, that is the preferred option, but we will be going continue to go through a process to ensure that all components of that actually achieve the best outcome for members. But yes, that's the preferred option. And one of the reasons that that is the preferred option is because there are capital gains tax advantages for the members in doing it in that way. 
yeah, you may describe them, yes, as capital gains tax advantages or more, that they just stay the same. There's no adverse impact out of that, correct? The advantage yeah. is that they're not disadvantaged. No, no disadvantage, correct. All right. And once that successor fund transfer happens, assuming that it does, there will only be one super fund operated by one path custodians, the retirement portfolio service. That's correct. And one path custodians will, as part of the IOOF transaction, be sold to IOOF. Yes, that's one of the preconditions, yes. And if we go to page.2275. So we can see that sketched out here in more detail. You start with two super funds, you then end up with only one super fund, that you start with ANZ, one path owning one path custodians, that you finish with IOOF owning one path custodians. Yes. Now, there's two aspects of the decision in relation to the successor fund transfer that we're interested in understanding. One is grandfathered commissions, and you've expressed a view about this in your witness statement. Yes. So, to put this in some a very small amount of context, can we bring up ANZ.800.697.7699? So these are the, at the front it's the meet or the management papers, I'm sorry, board meeting papers in relation to a meeting of the board of One Path Custodians and also Oasis Fund Management on the 26th of February 2018. Yes. And if we go through to page.7713. You want her to have a hard copy? I think one's about to be provided. If you okay, I'm content with that. I'm, I can yes. assist, Commissioner. Yes. Thank you. So this is a list of the matters arising for the meeting to be held on the 26th of February 2018 in relation to the transition. Yes. And if we go to page.7714. We see item number 16. And this reflects, I think, the view you were expressing before, which is for One Path Custodians to provide approval, and at this stage it's just talking about in principle approval, it will be conditional upon various matters, including being satisfied that it's in members' best interests for things to proceed. Yes, I see that. And is it fair to say one of the things that is of importance for you as the independent chair of the trustee is that you're satisfied that the members' best interests will ultimately be met? It will have to be in some way with the assistance of IOOF once the sale goes through? That's correct. And then if we go to page Actually, I can just add to that slightly, 
you use the term with the assistance of IWF, I would say that is dependent upon certain factors that we're satisfied with in relation to IWF. You have to be satisfied that it is possible yes. to meet the member's yes. best interests yes. if IWF is involved in the management of the fund? We recognise that there are certain matters that in order to satisfy the member's best interest test and to be satisfied it's in member's best interest, there are certain matters that, if you like, pertain to IWF, whether it's with their assistance, but there's certain aspects that, if you like, it's not just the technical transaction I would describe, it's actually the, their view about the, the business and the future. IWS view about yes, the business yes. and the future. Yeah. Yes. And then if we go to page dot seven seven five four. Sorry. Sorry, seven seven five four. So this is, have you got that up? Managed to find that, Ms Weeks? Yes, I have it here. So I'm this is part of the risk overview in relation to the proposals? Yes. And risk number four is advisor loss of revenue? Yes. And what's explained is the risk flows if the successor fund transfer disturbs the FOFA grandfathering of commission arrangements? Yes. I tender that document, Commissioner. Board meeting papers, one path custodian, 26 February 18, ANZ 800 697 7699, exhibit 5.252. And then if we go back to Exhibit VW29 of your statement. Ms Weeks. I'm sorry, Commissioner, it's ANZ.801.046.0001. Thank you. So this is a presentation prepared by certain parts of management in relation to the what's referred to as Project Edison, which we understand refers to this entire transaction? Yes, that's correct. And it's for a meeting on the 29th of March 2018? That's correct. And then if we go over the page to dot triple zero two. This is part of the presentation, but you see this is item six, Roman numeral five, future of financial advice grandfathering. And what's set out there is an objective to receive legal confirmation that future of financial advice grandfathering relief carries across to the RPS. Yes, I acknowledge that. And there's an explanation that the present status is that one path life pays commissions to advisors? That's correct. And so that's being paid by the life insurance company? As the administrator for the custodian. Out of the investments made with it through the life insurance policy, I'm sorry, through the investment linked insurance policies? Or you're My sure? understanding is that the the all the fees that customers, members pay for their products, um, the commissions are paid, any commissions are paid out of the payment by members of their fees for commissionable products, yes. I see. And it's explained that the current working assumption is that commissions will continue to be grandfathered? I acknowledge that that is what is noted there. I, I might... Um, provide a little bit of context. These are uh, management papers that, that, that go to the board. The issue of uh, 
grandfathering or the impact of tra uh, the transaction, the SFT, and the transaction of grandfathering was identified early in the transaction, early in the board's considerations, uh, it, as far back as the 26th of February meeting and possibly before, and notwithstanding the fact that some of the management papers and even the legal advice, not legal advices, but the, the I guess, assessment of risks uh, referred to uh, the issue of grandfathering as a risk as though if grandfathering weren't maintained, it, that was a problem. On several occasions, including that first assessment, both I and others on the board queried those those statements and said that that wasn't necessarily the view of the board um, or, a, or an intention or frankly a, a, a concern of the board and that we are and we continue to this day to you know await the detailed legal advice. I, I acknowledge that that paper and perhaps some of the earlier papers might lead you to believe that that was actually a board view and these, these papers were presented by management and the board is saying on a number of occasions um, until the full advice had been received wanted to you know, retain their, their position on that matter. I think you're quite clear in your statement that the view of management is not the view that you hold about grandfathering of commissions. I should put that a different way. You're quite clear in your statement that you don't accept as a matter of course that maintaining commissions is necessary or important if the success of fund transfer is going to go through. That's correct. And the point you're making is when you look at a number of these documents, management seems to be saying that it is of critical importance that commissions are grandfathered? I think as you look at them, that's a possible interpretation. The focus seemed to be as a recognised component part of working through the transaction that it was a matter that had to be considered about whether they were necessarily disturbed. I can't really give a view about what management did or didn't think. Um, I'm really want to give a view about the board's approach to the issue. Well, at least in this presentation, we see under the heading impact of denial or delay, support from the advisor network is critical for the IOOF sale. I acknowledge that. That's and, what they've written. And you understand the view of management. We can go to some other documents that would help, but I think you're obviously across it. Seems to be that if commissions are not grandfathered, then the advisor network will not support the super fund or the sale. Based on my participation in the board meeting, I, I, it certainly wasn't the, sen the strong sense that I got in those terms. No. Oh, you, I'm sorry, you're saying when you're actually in the board meetings and you look at these papers and discuss them and push back and challenge management, you didn't get the sense that they were strongly married to, say, that proposition, which is the support from the advisor network is critical for the IOOF sale and without grandfathered commissions, you'll lose the support of the advisor network. That's correct. And, um this on this particular day and it's probably been in subsequent board meetings an update on on where it's at we're waiting for legal advice it's unknown that's not to say it, it wasn't considered or the board didn't read the paper but any given meeting it wasn't there wouldn't have necessarily been a lengthy discussion about that um, but yeah I would yeah and in fact can you see how if via the success of fund transfer you simply cut off all commissions that might be in the interests of members? My, it, it might be, but I think the challenge as I see it with some of those issues is the first, 
position the board would take would be to understand the issue, to understand the legal position. So what what is the actual effect rather than forming a view about what we would like the effect of the transfer to be on grandfathered commissions. Um, secondly, on the, on the issue of grandfathered commissions generally, I, I think not just the legal position but understanding how our obligations as trustee um, interact in terms of choice members and members who've chosen a product versus members of the fund as a whole. So there's a set of lengthy considerations around it and I don't think the trustee has a clear view either on the yet because we haven't got the legal advice on the effect of the transaction, so the legal effect, and then to the extent there is a discretion or option for the trustee what, what would drive our determination and the factors that we would consider in determining what is in the best interests of members. Has the trustee considered previously why it's in the best interest of members to continue paying commissions? No, not, not in that specific manner, no. And so will part of the consideration that will now have to occur in relation to the success of fund transfer be whether it's actually ever in the interests of members to be paying commissions? Yes, that's correct. And in fact, as part of the advice that we will be receiving for the purposes of this matter, the effect of the transaction, we have also requested a deeper consideration even in the status quo about um, the retention or not of grandfathered commissions, absolutely. And ultimately, you as the chair of the trustee and you and the other members of the board will make whatever decision you think is in the best interests of members in relation to commissions regardless of what your parent company, whether it's ANZ or IOOF, wants. That is absolutely correct. And can I then show you another document and move to the second point we want to understand in relation to the sale process. Can we bring up ANZ.800.697.8299? So this is, or these are the papers in relation to a meeting that's to occur on the 29th of March, 2018. Yes. And if we go through to page dot eight three one four, See, this is another later version of that same type of action list of matters arising. Yes. And item number seven is presentation from IOOF. The board commented that it would be useful to have a presentation to the board from IOOF in relation to IOOF's strategic direction and business plan and operations, services and performance to give comfort to the board that members' best interest obligations will be met going forward. Yes. Has the board yet had a presentation from IOOF? No, we haven't. And do you know why that is? Yes, the board has discussed this on a number of occasions and as we have, and, and these minutes and actions are from March and before, we had always identified that this would be an important component, whether it was a presentation or as we discussed before, some input from IOOF. As we have, as a board and from the project team, progressed the planning of the success of fund transfer and all the considerations that go into that, we have decided, and we review this on an ongoing basis, that it would be better to seek input, if I could call it that, um, from IOOF at a later stage in the process. 
And the intention of that was not to, to put it off, but recognising that there were a number of aspects of the process where, in fact, the board could and in fact has made a number of decisions in relation to the structure, the future administration arrangements, our expectations will how the business will operate, that we can in fact do that and we can in fact secure commitments and arrangements before involving IOOF. And uh, strategically, in fact, it may be more sensible and in the member's best interest to address those issues first and be very clear about when we meet with IOOF, what it is if we meet or what we want or what we're seeking for IOOF, to be very clear about what that, what that is. Um, and so to do so too early may have the potential to confuse the board's considerations. Um, it is a complex process and, and as chair also, I was quite keen not to confuse the very deliberate and careful considerations and the component parts of our decision with a general engagement with IOOF. So as we progress through the process, I think the, the board and I both view that we need to be clear about what input we want from IOOF and at what stage. And the other thing that I would add is something, um, and I can't recall whether it was at, already at this meeting or afterwards, is that we talk a lot about the operating environment or the target operating model that will exist to support this future, bus future business. Um, and what that target operating model looks like is partly influenced by team structures, how they relate to investment frameworks, risk frameworks and governance frameworks. And that is one component we're waiting for. And I expect, would expect that in developing that clarity around the target operating model that we are asking the project team to present to us, they may well engage with IOOF. But again, at this stage, our focus has been, let's get that information, make sure we're comfortable with as a board and the point at which we feel the need directly as a board to engage with IWF will be at a later stage. I apologise for the long answer, but <laughs> it is something we've given quite a lot of thought to. That's right. So originally the board in March thought that it wanted to meet with IWF. Yes. And now it's decided that at least in the immediate future, it can put off meeting with IOOF? Yes, we will meet with them when we think the time is right and we will, in, I would use different language, it may be that we may not actually meet with them, that we will engage with them and seek information from them um, for particular purposes that it won't necessarily be, you know, take that, that form. So yes, it's, our thinking has um, matured as the transaction has progressed and yes, it, Almost at every board meeting, we have this conversation about what is the right time, what are we seeking from them, um, how does what they do fit into the assurances and certainties that we need to obtain to satisfy ourselves as part of a broader package that the both the SFT and the transaction will be in members' best interests. So it might be that it's possible for the board to resolve to approve the successor fund transfer without having met with IOOF? It is possible, yep. Would it be possible for the board to approve the successive fund transfer without being satisfied that upon the subsequent sale of One Path Custodians to IOOF, the members' best interests would be served by remaining within an entity controlled by IOOF? I think the answer is no. Would you mind repeating the question? Well, what I'm wondering about is, as you know, the original proposal seemed to be that there would be two successor fund transfers. Yes. Now it's only proposed that there'll be one successor fund yes. transfer. The consequence of there only being one successor fund transfer is that One Path Custodians will just be the trustee of a single superannuation fund into which both the master fund and also the RPS formed separate divisions of that fund? Yes. 
one path custodians has no control over whether its parent company sells it to IOOF? Once all the condition precedents are satisfied and the SFT occurs, yes. But the SFT is just the SFT of the master fund into the RPS? That's correct. And what I'm trying to understand is now that there's just one successive fund transfer and it's just a transfer of the master fund over into the RPS, is it necessary for the board to actually take into account at all what's happening with IOOF? At the board's view is, yes, it is very much a consideration, absolutely. And so if the board wasn't satisfied that ultimately being within the IOOF group was in the best interests of members, then the consequence would be it wouldn't approve the successor fund transfer? That's correct. And one of the things the board has been doing, or one of the things the board has done, is to monitor and review some media stories about IOOF? Yes. And if we bring up ANZ.801.098.2251, I'm not sure it matters. There is what we're looking at, what we're going to look at, I think, are the draft minutes of a meeting that occurred a couple of weeks ago. Yes. One of the items that the board considered at that meeting were some recent media reports in relation to IOOF. Yes. And it also received, I don't, I'm obviously not asking you to tell me what this is, but it also received a legal view about that. If we go to page dot two two five seven. This is, as I say, the draft minutes, but this is. Yes, our internal um, legal advisors prepared a paper um, uh, identifying some of those issues. Yes. And. Presumably then one of the things that the board will have to continue to do is to monitor other information that's available about IOOF. That's correct. And that would include, for example, the evidence that was given last week by IOOF. Yes. And in doing that, is it your view that the trustee acting in the best interests of the members must take all of that information into account in forming a view as to whether putting those members within the control of the IOOF group is in their best interests? Yes, uh, and the only uh, modification of the yes is that um, we wouldn't merely rely on media reports or even the testimony. I think in that meeting the focus was it assisted us in identifying the issues of concern and I and the issues that I think that we would consider within the trustees remit validly of concern and some of the options that we had before us uh, to address those concerns and seek input from uh, IOOF on those issues. So it was assisting us to start to formulate how we would frame the considerations that you have referred to before relating to the relevance of the broader IOOF group in our deliberations around the success of fund transfer. I tender the draft minutes, Commissioner. Before we deal with that, the board meeting agenda of 29 March as well, or Just is that already you. in? No, I don't believe that is in, Commissioner. I tender that as well. Board meeting agenda, one path custodian, 29 March 18, uh, ANZ 800 697 8299, exhibit 2.253. 
Exhibit 5.254, draft minutes, one path custodians meeting, what date, July? 26th of July. 26th July, 18, ANZ 801 098 2251, Exhibit 5.254. Commissioner, I don't have any more questions for Ms Weeks. Yes. Is there anything to There's no re-examination. Might yes. you be excused, Your Honour? Yes. Thank you, Ms Weeks. You Thank may you. step down. You're excused.